Hello everybody, welcome back to RenderBots and today we're going to look at another plugin. Um, I've done one previously and this is the next best one I love so much. Um, it's by somebody called Nitro uh, 4D. Um, let's take a look at his website. Here it is, uh, nitro4d.com and it's called Nitro Blast. Uh, basically what this is going to do for us is allow us to uh, break things up into lots of different bits. What's great about this, it works for Windows and Mac, uh, all the way up to uh, R15. Obviously, it's not been tested in R16 yet, but I'm sure it'll be compatible. Um, it's actually 40 euros, uh, which is really, really um, great for what this does. Um, it does mean that you need to send off your um, few digits down to him so he can, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, send you uh, the correct version uh, for you. Um, so we'll need your serial number Cinema 4D to do this. Um, and what we do is take a look at exactly what this does. So here's the website, it's Nitro 4D, and it's called Nitro Blast. So let's not hesitate, let's jump straight into Cinema 4D. So here we are in Cinema 4D, and the first thing you see is we've got nothing in our viewport here, nothing down here, and very simply, uh, we go into our plugin section here, Select Mitro Blast, and as you see, we've got a few things that it does, and we're just going to look at the first part of this in this tutorial today, and it's called the Nitro Blast Main. And I promise you, you'll be amazed by this. So we give that one click, and as you see, uh, nothing appears inside of our window here. This is obviously where we keep all of our objects. Uh, and all we're presented with is this lovely, um, very simple uh, window. So to make all of this work, the first thing we need to do is just basically um, add a floor and add some objects. So let's go to our cube here and let's put down a plane. Okay, there's our plane, grabbing this little bit here, drag, drag, drag. There you go, there's our floor, simple as that. Next thing up, we're gonna click up here and grab, oh, let's grab a capsule, there you go. And as you see up here, they're appearing in this window here. Uh, by grabbing my little green disc up here, little green arrow, lift it above, Hit the little dot there, make it a little bit smaller, like that. Okay, so obviously, if I press play now, nothing happens. Uh, it's just two objects in the viewport. So what I've got to do is very simply uh, come to Nitro Blast, and I'm going to give all these objects a, a preset. So first of all, I click on the plane. Okay, so we click it here or here. Uh, we go to the word automatic, and I'm going to set it to um, static. And you see here it says plane is now static. Uh, second up, we click on the uh, capsule, and we're going to make that dynamic. Okay, so we just clicked on the word dynamic. So if I press play now, and it rocks over like that. What we could do with doing <coughs> right now is adding a few more seconds to our projects. So if I click on this little window down here and click upwards, we'll make this 10 seconds long. Click and drag that over. Perfect, so now we've got like a 10 second project. So if I hit rewind and then press play, <coughs> it rocks over a bit like a weeble. There you go. <laughs> if you don't know what a weeble is, go and Google it. I'm sure it'll be on there. Right, okay, so it's just going to hit that and rock over, but this is called Nitro Blast, right? So what we want to happen is for this to maybe explode when it hits here. So let's go to the word main. And you see here, it's got uh, the word quality is medium, so the breaking is medium. It will break it into two pieces. Okay. So um, we don't want two pieces. So I can drag this little slider and make it look at this, thousands of pieces. Again, this will take quite a while for you to do lots of little cuts, which we would, would have to do previously, uh, cut through the actual um, shape. So what I can do here is just go, well, look, I just want to maybe about, uh, let's pick about 70, there we go, I'll we'll double click that as well, type in 70, and I'm just going to use the word uh, fracture. Now some really cool stuff happens here, and this is where the plugin really comes into its own. What's happening here is it's generating, you see now the capsule's gone, it's been replaced with the word uh, nitro blast capsule, I've hit the little plus button there. It then starts to talk about all the pieces and what they're going to do. We also notice two pieces of material have suddenly appeared here, which is all the way down here. At the moment you see we've got a blue and a yellow, but where is the yellow? Well if I press the play button we'll find out. There you go. There's your yellow. 
Um, and again, it's just give us these by default. Uh, again, if I hit rewind, press play. Okay, pretty good. And if you counted them, there would be 70 pieces there. Again, it's doing a lot of work for us to, to cut a lattice out straight away. So <clears throat> what else is inside of here? Uh, well, if I click on the shape again, and maybe we had a cylinder. So this time we've got a cylinder in our shape menu, grab the green, uh, move over to the red. And again, just got the orange bit all, just make it a little bit shorter for us. And if I go to my auto bit here, so at the moment it's got no, um, no dynamics to it all, so we'll need to make this dynamic as well. And as you see, it added to, to the list. Uh, what's really cool is obviously the name you call it will be in here straight away. If hit rewind and press play, you'll see now that the cylinder's not going to do very much other than just sort of bounce around. And the reason why I've got this bit here is because if I go back to the word main, you see it's got 70 pieces, but this time you see the word thickness here. Um, again, it's really cool because all I'm going to do is going to make it like maybe, I don't know. Let's make it 5% uh, thickness. So what I gotta do now is hit the word fracture button. Okay, so again, it takes a few seconds. Depending on the speed of your computer, I've noticed this, if you've got a fairly older computer, that fracture process may take a bit longer. And of course, when it hits the ground and explodes, um, I'm running a 2013 MacBook Pro 15 inch here. So this is running pretty quick here. Um, <clears throat> it should do it pretty quick. So if I press play now, okay, something different, right? So what's happened here? Well, what we've done is with the cylinder is we've added this thing called thickness. So if we can take a look at these little parts here, and again, using these little uh, windows in my viewport to have a look, we can actually see the thickness of the polygon. So it actually knows it's still a cylinder, but has chosen to actually give it a bit like a jug, if you like, give it... Um, an actual um, thickness to the whole thing, so it's not a great big chunk you actually disperse in here, uh, which is pretty cool. So if I hit rewind and then press play, we'll see that fall. Again, you see it just collapses in on itself and throws it into all those little bits. Uh, what's really good about all of this is, is if I hit rewind here, and I can go up inside of here, you see this little chunk here? Okay, or up here, up here. Oh, so in space, it still allows me to highlight areas of the polygon. But what's really cool is because obviously, if this bit impacted first on the floor in real time, this would probably fracture into smaller parts. Okay, uh, because the weight of the device uh, falling down um, with, a, with a, obviously the weight of the device falling on the floor, normally we get sort of small pieces at the bottom. So what I can do is click on this bit here, and again, maybe not 70 pieces, but reduce that to maybe, I don't know, maybe five pieces. Just because I've highlighted that, I can hit fracture again. And what it's now done is, is fracture that part uh, five more times. So again, if I click on here, hit fracture there, and again, you see it's fractured again into five small parts. So I could do this a little bit more here. So if I look now and it comes through, you see we've got a lot more um, little bits uh, going on through there. Again, a little bit more realistic. It's just not small bits flying out all over the place. Okay, so as you can see, when we press play, it just simply blows up now and we've got the pile there and we've got this bit swing. But as you can see, depending on what sort of, reflect, what sort of um, destruction we're doing here, we actually might want to be able to, see they're all skinning off, and maybe that looks a little bit like ice, you know, maybe ice coming through from ice cubes and it's kind of hitting the floor and it's just skimming. So you've got two surfaces here. So we've got something called um, friction, right? Is that this effect uh, by default is set to 30%. So you see the bits skimming off each other. Again, maybe you don't want to do that. So what we need to do is what I'm gonna do is gonna get rid of just the cylinder for a second. I'm going to keep the capsule. So just clicked on that and press the delete key. Um, and what we do is with the word uh, nitroblast capsule on, we see the word friction here is set to 30%. So if I pause, we'll have a quick look at it again. So you can see it's skimming off like ice. I hit that. Now I find um, this is a great one. It's about 103. So I type 103 into my friction box here. Press enter. Boom. Now if I press that and press play, there you go. It gives it a much, a much more realistic sort of pile of bits kind of hitting each other. <clears throat> so let's watch that again. 
There you go, much better. Again, have a good, have a good um, go with this. It's actually quite a fun uh, thing because you can get some pretty comic, a lot of comedy out of this as well. So remember, if I hit rewind here, let's go to my plugin. Where are we? Uh, there we go, main. Um, as I said, we've not done on here, but if I click on this bit here, let's give that quite a few other bits. So let's run that up. Let's give it 21. Hit fracture. Remember, it's going to fracture all those little bits there. Click on there. 21 there. <coughs> fracture there. And again, you can go around the device doing this. Uh, what's really cool, guys, is obviously if you download a normal 3D model from somewhere, maybe a car or a building, uh, this can be really, really cool because, you know, uh, just like in Transformers and things like this, we see buildings being smashed out of the screen. Uh, this is exactly what happens. There you go, look at that. Lots of little bits flying there as well. So we've fractured all the way across the bottom there. Nice and simple. As you see, you can see the computer slowing down now as well as it hits that. We see all those little bits there. What's cool is um, I can go back into these little bits and select from here and do a fracture here as well. So if I hit fracture there, so now when it hits, we'll see that other pieces now kind of gone. Um, there's another bit there. So we're really sort of playing with it and see what really works. But again, down to that friction, guys. Make sure you switch that on. So another thing we've got to look at here is is these textures, right? As you can see, um, it's pretty. Uh, they're pretty good. Um, but what if you want to change these? Well, very simply, I'm coming to the default blue here. Uh, give it a click. It brings up a material editor. And again, this has changed a lot in R16, which we will look at soon. Um, but things like inside here is transparency, reflection. So if I had some reflection inside here, so give a little tick box in there, drag that down. And we see now that our, our orbs got this supposed to be in flat. It's now got a reflection inside of it. So if there we go. So what you see now straight away on the blue piece there is that it actually is reflecting the outer shards inside of here. Again, really complex um, piece this is to do. Um, but really, really quite cool. Let's come down here and have a look at this. So obviously it's only going to reflect things inside of the scene. That's around it. Obviously we've got no light or anything inside of here yet. Uh, so you can see that nice reflection on here, going on here. Of course, we can go to the color, click on the color and say, oh, I don't really want that. Let's make it green. There you go, nice and green. Um, yep, so we'll leave that for that. So let's hit that, have a quick look. Again, not much going on because we don't really have a light in this. So maybe if we bring a light in, so we click on the blue uh, little uh, light there. Uh, let's click on light. And as I say, it always drops it in the center, but as we can see, the minute we lift it up, um, we, I always come down to the word shadows down here where it's got the word none. Make that soft. <clears throat> Very simply now if I give it a click. There we go, got some nice stuff going on inside of there. Really quite nice. There you go. Right, so as you see it renders it pretty quick as well. So all about this yellow one. So if I click on the yellow, give it a double click. Again, go to the color channel, click on the color channel. I can make this any color you want. Um, let's click on there. And again, this is bringing up uh, some 40s color palette. So let's, there you go. Um, what about some, let's have a look. Some bump. We have texture inside here. So let's have some uh, services, uh, payment. So we've got some, got some little cracks inside here now. And we see the sample there. So the strength of the cracks, there we go. Pretty good, and we see straight away it's affecting all this, just using a bump image. Let's hit rewind and I get a little play. Yeah, pretty good, right? So uh, it's blowing stuff up, that's pretty good. So watch it come down to here. Really cool. And again, it's gonna be different every time you do it, which is really, really quite cool, is that it's gonna be different when you do it. You can see the reflections working really well inside of there. So if I was going to be completely mad, we can probably um, add the bump to the floor as well. So we've added that little um, bump texture to the floor. Have a little look at that. Magic. Just hit rewind. So if I just press uh, render there, let's have a quick look at that. Nothing because the light is right inside of there. So if I drag that maybe here. Um, let's create another light. Let's put that one over here. 
And let's also give that some shadow as well down there. Perfect. It's probably quite low as well, so let's lift that up a little bit. And as you see, the two lights reflecting beautifully inside that Nitro Blast there. So press play. Magic. Let's hit uh, render. Really, really nice, guys. Really, really nice. Perfect. There you go. So again, I just want to keep that real, really simple uh, for you. Um, let's just get that rid of that. Um, so that was Nitro Blast plugin um, by Nitro 4D. Again, it's 40 euros, which is it's just phenomenal. And the guy's great. Um, every time you change from a different version of Cinema 4D, it'll go up, uh, obviously 13, 14, 15, and now we come up to 16. Um, you just send him an email, uh, just say you've changed um, the version number and he'll send you a brand new uh, version of that uh, software and he's ever so pleasant ever so polite enough uh, again he's not paid me for any of this i have paid for it myself so uh, he, he's a great guy and a lovely guy uh, who does some really good stuff inside of cinema so um <clears throat> until next time uh, again thank you for subscribing because uh, all your subscriptions means that um it tells me that you're watching and uh, it makes me want to do more of this um, obviously, you can find us at the usual address. Um, obviously, I'm available on Twitter, and you can email me directly. And, of course, that information is just down there. Uh, until next time, guys, you take care, and I'll see you next time. Happy rendering. Take care. Bye-bye.